tone that she had like in, in messages was night and day. So this is actually Blair on an alt account. This is her on an alt account spreading misinformation and trying to enhance her own image. What you did was unacceptable and goes so far beyond any petty beefs or squabbles or hurt feelings. There is not, nor will there ever be a price you can pay me to where I will put up with being a verbal punching bag. She did this, she paid people to dig up dirt. Harass me for months. You acted like this was a war and that you should be recruiting soldiers to come after us. You lied. And I can only think that's because you wanted us gone. Not just off of YouTube. <laughs> you wanted these lies to come into our everyday life offline. What she did to Wonder is the most gross expose I have ever seen. I had to be walking on eggshells 24-7 due to someone's unpredictable and erratic behavior. This wasn't just trying to separate yourself from us like we asked for and worked to do. Stop going after people who were your friends. Stop bullying other creators. I don't mention this person's channel, but uh, it's a it's a very small YouTuber. But she had like five sources. You know, one was Wikipedia, one was BuzzFeed. Drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time. Am I late to the party? I am sorry that I was ever friends with you. Did you see Legal Eagle was accused of plagiarism by another YouTuber called Illuminati? I can completely understand why she would be compared to Creepshow art after this situation. She went from seeming to be petty to seeming to be outright malicious and full on evil. This is a perpetual onslaught of accusations backed by convincing evidence by the people who knew her best. She seems vengeful. It seems like she has a pattern. She has a pattern of being vengeful towards content creators in her back. For the message that I sent originally to be taken in such a harsh way and to be justified as a reason to say that many things about me, I feel like it was a very intentional misunderstanding. You claim you don't know what goes on in my personal life, but you go in depth about my living situation, my views on life, my depression, my car, my dog, and my mental health. And yep, Illuminati's right there with all the count. What's that saying? You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. A statement that terrifies me. Because lately on YouTube, it's really turning out to be true. A statement that the Illuminati, also known as Blair, now knows to be true. Blair was praised for a long time on YouTube for being a sort of online YouTube vigilante, exposing scams and unjust, corrupt businesses. An anti MLMer, and originally a YouTube channel that greatly inspired my own YouTube channel. Blair's YouTube YouTube channel and her triangle avatar gathered a large community of like-minded people who wanted to stand up for the little guys who were being taken advantage of by those in power. Big businesses, scammers, and celebrities who were using their powers of money and influence to take advantage of those who had no money, power, or influence. But the problem is, as Blair gained more and more followers, she herself gained more money, more power, and more or influence. Blair would oftentimes tell me that she herself had enough money to retire at any given moment. Now, she was a very successful businesswoman, and from the surface, that did seem true. Blair even had a few BMWs of her own. And then what you start to do with those things really matters, because you cannot be someone with a large amount of money, power, and influence who's misusing their money and power and influence behind the scenes, and yet simultaneously critiquing others 
others who are misusing their money, power, and influence. That doesn't work. And yet, that's exactly what Blair did. She became a giant hypocrite. Blair became the exact type of person that she was constantly critiquing on her YouTube channel. I was fired. Blair had taken the car as well as my belongings. My life had been set back to square one. What I do care about is how lies were weaponized against myself and my friends. And she like spews literal lies about people. Literal fucking lies about people. Blair is not a good person. And Blair has hurt a lot of people in the YouTube community, including myself. And worst of all, beyond Blair being a giant hypocrite, Blair felt this need to take down others within the YouTube community in order to stay on top in her mind. And I was one of those people that Blair tried to take down at one point. Blair became a massive bully to many people. In fact, one of the biggest bullies on YouTube. All so she could keep her status as one of the top commentary channels on YouTube until it all came back to bite her in the ass. So Blair, this is why you don't treat someone like shit. Or maybe this is why you don't treat a lot of people like shit. You can't just sue everyone on YouTube until the end of time. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that Illuminati would come out and threaten them and, and you know, stop them from speaking, although that is actually something which did apparently happen in this situation, but yeah. And you could have just avoided all of this and a lot of lawyer fees if you were, I don't know, maybe just nice to people. I really didn't want to make this video as most of my longtime followers know as you've been asking for a video on this topic and honestly I'm really ashamed of how long it took me to make this video because of how much I praise people for speaking out about their story and yet honestly my mental health for the past two months couldn't really handle speaking about my experiences with Blair. I know I've been silent for such a long time and so many people have wondered what has taken place, whether Blair forced me to be silent and what happened, and so I'm going to be sharing it all today. Blair caught me at such a vulnerable time. Two years ago, I was really early in my pregnancy. I was extremely sick in such a vulnerable state. I was in and out of the hospital. I had to stay on bed rest. I wanna talk about how I've been doing physically. For a while, I've been talking about how I've been feeling really sick, I can't post a lot because I'm so sick, and a lot of you guys have guessed that I'm pregnant because, you know, that's a realistic guess, you know, it's, um, I understand. And all of this stress of the drama that Blair put me through really sent me over the edge at that point. For me to try this many times to extend the olive branch, I feel like it was a very intentional misunderstanding. It just feels stupid and it's stressful. And I was so afraid that I was going to lose my pregnancy possibly because of the stress and how sick I was. Someone that I looked up to and idolized and respected was trying to destroy me at the most vulnerable possible time. What I think I see here in this situation is we have a large creator strong arming a small creator to silence their criticism of them. And when the dust cleared from all the drama, all I wanted was for Blair to just do better. So when all of this happened and Blair was exposed for hurting even more people than just me, in a weird way, it really disappointed me. But to offer some context, because I'll probably mention it throughout this video, over two years ago, I had a personal phone call with Blair. I did not record this phone call. I don't know if Blair did, but not Neither of us gave our consent to record this phone call. So throughout this video, I'll give my personal recollection of what was in this phone call. I remember it very vividly, but again, it was over two years ago and I did not record this phone call. I have to voice this over because whenever I try to film this, it makes me a little bit too emotional. And if I'm just constantly crying on camera, I don't think this video is going to get very far. 
I've recently received confirmation that though I did not consent to this phone call being recorded, unfortunately, Blair recorded the phone call without my permission and has likely kept a recording of that phone call if she ever needed to use it against me, which is slightly terrifying because I don't really know how she could clip it out of context if she wanted to or take one small snippet and make it sound like I'm saying something completely different than what I was saying. And I don't know if she'll try to release audio snippets of that phone call after this video. All I can say is it feels incredibly violating that she did that to me since I had enough respect for her at the time not to record our private conversation. So I want to speak to Blair right here and only right here in this video. Did you really record a conversation with a pregnant person without their consent, after pretending to be their friend? Is that really the type of person that you are? Is that really the extent of what you did to me? But I'll talk about more of my personal story with Blair later in this video. I want to start off this video as I normally do in a structured way. And at the end, I'll share my personal story with Blair. If you're new, my name's Madison. My channel is this one, Cool World Happy Mind, and I cover people, influencers, celebrities, scammers who've taken advantage of or caused harm to their audience. If you like those sort of topics, subscribe, and if you like this video, give it a like. And now let's get into this video on how Illuminati became the biggest bully on YouTube. And before we discuss the most personal video topic that I've ever made a video on, I want to discuss today's sponsor. I'm, I'm filming a sponsor. Do you have something to say? Okay. I want to discuss today's sponsor, which can help you with your personal finances, Rocket Money. Life is full of exciting changes, like landing a new job, buying a new car, or even tying the knot. But for me, it was the desire to renovate my very old home and pay off my car that sparked a whole new financial challenge. It was especially the challenge of saving up to renovate my home that has taken me a lot of time and financial planning, and I really needed help from a platform platform like Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance platform that has been a game changer in helping me achieve my home renovation goals. First and foremost, Rocket Money made it a breeze to cancel all those unnecessary subscriptions that were silently draining my funds. I always forget how many monthly subscriptions I've agreed to. And with the money I saved from canceling those subscriptions, I could save more monthly. It felt like a financial win-win. I also also set up budgets with Rocket Money. It was eye-opening to see where my money was going. The app automatically tracked my spending by category, which helped me identify areas where I could be cutting back. Speaking of cutting back, Rocket Money's bill negotiation feature is a lifesaver. A simple snap of my bill and tap on the app, and they negotiate better deals for me on my internet and cell phone bills. With these cost savings, I can contribute even even more towards my home renovation savings. And seeing those savings grow can bring so much excitement and motivation towards this massive and intimidating project. Now, I know that managing credit score is essential. Rocket Money's credit score monitoring gave me complete access to my credit score and I received timely alerts about any changes. It was like having a financial guardian guiding me toward improving my credit score for better financial opportunities opportunities. But the real magic for improving my savings happened with the smart savings account on Rocket Money. I set a specific savings amount to save regularly, and the app automatically deposited it into my savings account, which really helps if you have a savings goal that you're trying to set, like with my home renovations goal. No hassle, no stress, just steady progress towards my dream home renovations. So friends and fellow acquaintances, if you're on your own financial 
financial journey, whether it's saving up for a dream home, just cutting down expenses, or planning for the future. Rocket Money is the perfect ally to have by your side. Download Rocket Money and unlock even more features with premium. Go to rocketmoney.com slash cruelworldhappymind or click the link in the video description. And thank you so much to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video and empowering millions to take control of their finances. Illuminati, also known as Blair or Blair's On, was born on January 23rd. The Illuminati YouTube channel is most commonly associated with Blair's pyramid avatar, with lots of people creating fan art for Blair, Blair even creating plushies for her pyramid avatar, though originally Blair dipped her toes, that's a weird visual, tried her hand at a few different YouTube styles of content before doing the pyramid avatar and initially showed her face in her videos making interesting story time videos this is a story about boop you just thought you were going there this and then all of a sudden you're like you know out mona lisa's arm i tried to pick the up with my hands it broke in half in the toilet and often collaborated with different YouTubers, most notably Tommy C's news channel, SFTP, where she played a character called Sarah J. Warren. The letters of her name spelling out SJW, which is supposed to stand for Social Justice Warrior, where Blair was supposed to play an over-the-top social justice warrior character on the show to make fun of social justice warriors. Sarah J. Warren is unapologetically feminist, and if they don't like it, then I would love to drink their overprivileged male tears, okay? Which is a stark contrast to the content that Blair makes on her channel today, and the podcast she did for the past few years, The Leftist Mafia. So for a lot of fans, it was kind of shocking to see her so overtly play a character making fun of social justice warriors. The main takeaway here being, does Illuminati just stand for nothing? Of course, your views can change over time, but when it becomes a pattern where your views change just to fit your platform and brand whenever it benefits you, it's just you not standing for anything, which is the complete opposite of, I don't know, literally your entire brand and platform and everything I thought Illuminati stood for. Blair was given admin access to Tommy C's news channel, but it was his channel, not Blair's. Basically, Tommy was the owner and Blair was the collaborator. It's been alleged that Blair left the news channel because she got mad at Tommy C for making a fat joke about another news host on the channel. She comes up to me and she goes, Tommy, I have a problem. I had called, uh, <laughs> Rico fat. But on this news channel, Blair also seemingly participated in fat jokes. As much as she, you know, perpetuated the jokes of him being fat, she couldn't handle fat jokes about him. Apparently he's fat. What? <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> Don't cut it out. No, comrade. Do not cut that out, comrade. Leave oh. that. <laughs> Comedy golden, you know it. So it seems like there was this sort of cultural norm of everyone making fun of everyone. And then all of a sudden, Illuminati just decided she didn't agree with one joke and cut everyone off, which I think is a little bit too convenient. I think there was maybe a different reason why she left the group. I think she started to decide that she didn't want to be associated anymore with the channel and the character she was playing as she was branching off off and rebranding her own personal channel. And it just became a convenient excuse when Tommy C made this fat joke. But that's just my opinion. I think personally, she didn't want her character on this show, which is anti-social justice warrior, coming to light when her main channel starts taking off because she knew it would likely cause her controversy. And I think that because when she left, not only did Blair disassociate with Tommy C and the entire group, but because she had admin access to Tommy C's channel, she also went into his channel and deleted 
all of his videos with her in it and with her social justice warrior character in it. But in the meantime, that deleted all of Tommy C's revenue and all of his work that he put in for those videos. And she clearly did not care about anyone but herself and protecting her own booty. Well, I might have to do something about it. Okay. You know, not thinking that she would delete my videos. Also, I want to note from the two or three hour phone call Blair and I had, I remember her saying that mainly Tommy C and Tipster were out to get her, that they make fun of people's weight, and that they constantly mock her for her weight and her appearance, which I remember feeling really bad for her about at the time during our phone call. Something I find really interesting is that throughout Blair's time on YouTube, she's mainly long term friends with men on the platform. Like initially it was Tipster and Tommy C and that whole group and then it switched to Oz Media, Wonderstruck Guy and the Milkmen. But at the same time she doesn't just become friends with these male creators. Lair wants to control and dominate these male creators on the platform. But if any of these male colleagues that Blair worked with, lived with, basically controlled, ever crossed or disobeyed her, they became a part of her alleged hit list that Blair had and that at one point I was apparently also part of and will probably become a part of after this video. Anybody criticized it needs to be silenced or put in line uh, or smeared. Where you're her target and she is actively trying to ruin you and your reputation in any way possible. And Blair goes to great lengths to try and take down criticism of her. She's been known to abuse the copyright system to take down critical videos and has even gotten artists to copyright strike fan art to get critical videos taken down of her. Now there was nothing in the video that Blair could copyright strike herself. So you want to know what she does? She decided to abuse the copyright strike system by contacting the artist who made fan art of Illuminati that Nick used for the thumbnail of his video. And she got the artist to copyright strike the video and get it taken down. And the way she contacted this artist was just very manipulative because she referred to Nick's channel as a hate channel. And she was just letting this artist know that her work was being used so that way the artist can protect their work. That particular video was uploaded by a person named Nicholas Diorio. And in that particular video, he came to an agreement with that artist that if he removed the thumbnail with the fan art, that artist would take take down the copyright strike. Which makes sense because the art isn't in the video anymore, so legally there is no copyright make sense. So what does Blair do? She doesn't let it go. Instead, she goes to someone whose clip is used in the video in a fair use way and she messages that person and says, hey, your clip is used in this video. You should copyright strike this video. Now the person she contacted was somebody by the name of Fallery and it was because there was footage of her vlog used in the video. That person messages Blair back and says, uh, no, I'm pretty sure that's fair use. So Blair has a little bit of a tendency to be relentless, but it wasn't just Blair's relentless attitude that caused her to go from Sarah J. Warren to Blair's on. There was a tremendous rebrand where she became a big content creator who was fairly well regarded, seen as the YouTuber who was gonna stand up for the little guy and take down the big bad company. So what was Blair's big break? Blair's initial big break before she transitioned into commentary content was Reddit content, particularly Reddit content reading off of the anti-MLM subreddit. These videos were literally videos where she would just find funny r slash anti-MLM posts and basically upload videos reacting to these r slash anti-MLM posts. And these videos went pretty viral and they were pretty funny. Blair had some funny commentary to these posts reacting to people buying essential oils and putting 
spraying oregano oil on their feet, people posting about funny patterns on Lululemon leggings. They were pretty ridiculous and out there, and they were also a stark contrast to the content that she uploads today. This is when I first found Blair, long before I ever started making YouTube videos, and I think it's how a lot of people stumbled onto the anti-MLM topic. Also, during this time, there was a huge boom in the Reddit content on YouTube, like the YouTube channel r slash, whom Illuminati ended up having beef with when she accused r slash of subbotting. Now, I know some of you are familiar with Blair's history with r slash where she accused him of using subbots. She has said multiple times that other YouTubers use subbots, particularly ones that she doesn't like. So yeah, I personally think that she lied about the whole r slash using subbots thing. But Illuminati ended up deleting all of her Reddit content of this style as she transitioned into her corporate commentary style that she does today. I'll see if I can find some of her old Reddit videos but because she's tried to make sure all of her Reddit content has been wiped from the internet, as you can see from her social blade, when there's a massive dip in views, that's because she deleted all of her Reddit content. I don't know if I'll be able to find any of these old videos. So Illuminati pivoted from this Reddit format to her commentary style that she does today, which is more of a research-based format. And there's a lot of potential reasons as to why she pivoted. I will say that during during our phone call, Blair was telling me, at least personally, that she was trying to focus on commenting on companies over people and didn't morally agree with talking about people. I don't fully disagree with her notion, of course, but I do think it's short-sighted. If someone is doing harmful, downright abuse, things. They're scamming people. They're hurting people. Awareness needs to be spread about that person. To act like you are so far above commentary, drama, and gossip channels, or anyone who makes videos on people, which is kind of how she acted on that phone call at the time, I found to be kind of self-important because it has literally been found to be a natural part of human behavior. And in my opinion, I think you can do it in an ethical way where you're being empathetic, compassionate, and raising awareness, or you can do it in an unempathetic and unethical way. Either way, Blair's original videos were deleted and she switched to commentary videos. And I think this is where we see Blair's girl boss era, where she really starts pumping out five plus videos a week of a variety of different topics, starting multiple different channels, the Sad Milk YouTube channel, the Illuminati channel, the channel about her dog Casper, and throughout her time on YouTube, if you've been a sort of avid follower of hers, or just, I don't know, seen her around, you've seen her try a variety of different projects, whether they're collaborations or new businesses, some working out more than others. But on her main channel, Illuminati, Blair has two main series that she's done, Multi-Level Mondays and Corporate Casket. Multi-Level Mondays is a series about multi-level marketing companies. Multi-Level Marketing Companies, MLMs, are often equated to pyramid schemes. Think companies like like unique, LuLaRoe, Herbalife, videos about how MLM companies are bad can be described as anti-MLM videos. These videos raise awareness about how MLM companies use cult-like practices to recruit people into their companies. Members pretending to be your friend, sliding into your DMs saying things like, hey hun. Multi-level marketing companies are often known to over-promise you a future income. You're going to make X amount of money if you join our company and buy our product when in reality, they're taking money from you by requiring you to purchase upfront product. And there's a fairly well-known statistic that something like 99% of people in MLM companies lose money, not make money. They're equated to pyramid schemes and scams because only the owners of the companies or those at the very top, the people who joined at the very beginning, actually end up making money. And the rest of the people who joined are taken advantage of and end up losing money. A a lot of you know my start on YouTube was making anti-MLM content. Many people have tried to 
wrote me into MLM companies, as I'm sure a lot of you have experienced as well. And it was often under the guise of pretending to want to be my friend, which always made me sad. <laughs> and after a few bad experiences, I decided to make a YouTube channel about it. And Blair was already an anti-MLM YouTuber by the time I started making any sort of content. Another series Blair does on her channel is her corporate casket series, which calls out companies and charities such as Autism Speaks and PETA who have committed questionable or illegal actions. And under mainly these two series, Blair produces a lot of content. Try a video almost every day, at least five days a week. I couldn't comprehend how somebody could be producing that much content. It seems exhausting and honestly unsustainable, especially to be keeping up with quality. If you're not exhausting yourself, you're exhausting someone on your team. On our phone call, Blair was also kind of bragging to me about having six different businesses outside of YouTube. And already I couldn't comprehend how someone could be posting as frequently as the Illuminati channel was. So Blair was not only a content machine, but a girl boss who had it going on and just knew how to do business. Her former friends alleged that she would often say to them that she already had enough money to retire. Blair would oftentimes tell me that she herself had enough money to retire at any given moment. She was a very successful businesswoman and from the surface that did seem true. Blair even had a few BMWs of her own as well as Oz at the time so I trusted my friends who seemed to have it all and I trusted the process which again I found out was a very bad mistake. So it seems like money and business business and success on YouTube were pivotal focuses for Blair. And now we know that Blair is the CEO of digital media company Pyramid Entertainment LLC, which has offices in Colorado, Tennessee, and Indiana. But the thing is, when your focuses aren't on the heart of the purpose of your YouTube channel, which is not to generate massive amounts of income for yourself, but to spread awareness on dangerous business practices, your audience starts to notice. Illuminati is slowly turning into a parody of herself. Grocery stores are evil. Dentists are evil. Geez, lady, guess I'll die then. If you're making five videos a week on a bad company or an MLM company, how much can you do that before the topics become derivative? Because not every company is evil, or at least as evil as you claim them to be. I mean, so you get to a point where you're kind of just over-exaggerating topics for content and views. Eventually, you're not actually raising any awareness or doing any good. You're just posting about random companies. Blair claimed that the channel Legal Eagle was copying her channel because their editors were using the highlighter and ripped paper effects, which are very common editing effects and pretty much open source effects. No one has copyright over these techniques. This entire situation going viral is very ironic to me. The fact that Blair would so openly and publicly, brazenly and confidently claim that someone is copying her. So ironic because two years ago, Blair tried to end me for DMing her privately about a possibility that she could have copied my content. People in Cruel World Happy Mind's comment section thought that Blair stole the entire video from Cruel World Happy Mind. Now, Cruel World Happy Mind noticed these comments in her comment section. However, she didn't use the word stealing. Okay, let's keep that in mind. She decided to send a message to Blair, and honestly, it's one of the nicest messages that she could have possibly sent for this situation. And it was a very mature message. However, Blair is not mature. She decided to vent out her frustration on a podcast and completely lie about cruel world happy mind. I don't know, hypocritical much? It's almost mind-blowing, the hypocrisy of it. And now she gets blasted on the internet because she thought someone copied her for using a highlighting and ripped paper technique. But she literally tried to destroy me because a few people left comments on my videos 
episode like this one letting me know that she was making really similar content to me. So I decided to DM her privately and let her know. And she tried to literally end me. What I did have happen though recently, it's a, it's a very small YouTuber. She DM'd me on Instagram claiming that I copied her. She claimed that I copied her video that she had done oh. maybe a couple weeks ago, right? So she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit. Yeah. And I was like, I will remember this. I won't say yeah. anything, but I'll remember it. I never accused, straight up accused this creator, this larger creator of copying. I send this larger creator a message. At the time of sending that message, since I was like just a really small creator, I was like, I don't know how to handle this. I felt super awkward. So I was just like, hey, um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of messages about this, but like, let's talk. And for some reason, this message made this larger creator think it's okay to go on a podcast and spread completely false information. Two years later, she gets blasted all over the internet for claiming someone copied her. If that's not karma, I don't know what is. The irony of it all. Okay, so what exactly happened with the editor from Legal Eagle? Like I said, the editor from Legal Eagle reached out to an editor from Blair's team, asking if they had some After Effects plugins that they could utilize. So Illuminati put out a tweet after the Legal Eagle editor sent an email saying, not at Legal Eagle, e <laughs> Legal Legally, <laughs> not at Legal Eagle editors, try and say Legal Eagle five times fast, not at Legal Eagle editors, broaching my editors to take my video's style. And when they didn't give up the info, they literally copied it. And by the way, I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. Just change the color from purple to blue, huh? Interesting. Then Blair showed the side-by-side -side of the ripped paper and the highlighting effect. If you've been watching my videos, you know I do the highlighting effect all the time. I think it's a great way to highlight a quote, obviously, <laughs> because you're highlighting a quote. It's a great way to source something. So many different channels do this, but I guess we're all copying Illuminati, obviously. I think societally, we all know when something is copying versus when something is not copying. Like if someone says something word for word, when you're using an effect preset or something that can be easily done on Adobe After Effects, it's literally by its basic definition, a preset. You're not ripping off someone's entire brand. You're just doing a preset. It's like someone who does a glitch transition or a whoosh sound effect and then claims anyone who does a glitch transition or whoosh sound effect is copying them. So most people who saw Blair's tweet were literally flabbergasted. They were just like, um, what? What are you talking about? And I think what rubbed people the wrong way was just the attitude that Blair had about the whole thing. It was a sort of attitude of, take that Danny the editor and the whole Legal Eagle team. I'm going to publicly expose you for trying to copy my style instead of handling it privately if she had an issue. She was so brazen and confident that she was going to take down a lawyer and his YouTube team for copying her highlight and torn paper technique. And people just saw her attitude in an extremely unfavorable light. Then on Twitter, H Bomber Guy, sorry if I mispronounced that, further exposed Blair's hypocrisy of the plagiarism accusation when he accused Illuminati of blatant plagiarism. When she says a line from a documentary without citing the source on screen, she claims that part of of her saying this line is in quotations to make it clear that this is a quote from the documentary. For example, copying someone else's documentary directly into your script, end quote. However, in his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary, and even visually, you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. But when you see the clip from the documentary and then the clip from Illuminati's video, it's not a good look. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine 
and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse and misprescribing of controlled. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse of prescribing controlled drugs. It does make it seem like she took the quote from the documentary and tried to recreate it or reclaim it as her own quote. Though it's hard to say what could be defined as plagiarism or just a sourcing mistake. But of course, properly sourcing is a separate issue from copying and plagiarism and not as important as blatant copying and can be extremely harmful to genuine creators and people who are putting in hours of work to create genuine content. So I want to ask both viewers and other YouTubers here, what is copying to you? When what a channel does is just push out content again and again and again to feed this sort of machine no matter what, who gives a shit about what they're stealing from? They're just gonna do it because they need to keep going. I do think it's an important issue to be discussed because if copying is over-policed on YouTube, that can sort of limit creativity and collaboration. But at the same time, I know myself and other content creators spend hours, days, weeks on our content. And lately I've been seeing something happen that has kind of rubbed me the wrong way where channels take the analytics of other channels and they say, okay, repeat whatever videos worked on these channels. Replicate the styles that are working well. Replicate their intros, their chapters, their overlays, their color style, their title format. Every topic that they do that has worked well, let's do those topics. Basically, let's take this channel, let's boil down everything that's working for them, everything they spend hours to make unique and individual to them, and let's replicate it on our channel and reproduce as much of it as possible in a way that these channels with no team can't do. There is no originality, no creativity, and no effort involved in this. That's not taking inspiration from channels. That's copying the little guys. That's exploitative. Illuminati has been doing this system for years. Asher is probably just one example out of many that yeah, have experienced a very similar thing. If not by Anna Oop, then by another one of these sort of uh, content farmy sort of channel. Illuminati, Illuminati? Yeah, I think that's how I'm supposed to say it. Or two YouTubers that see seemingly content farmed, content farmified their channel. I do think it needs to be called out when it happens because it is by definition abuse of power. You are taking your power, your money, your larger following to crush the little guy. You are abusing your power as a larger person with more influence, more money, a larger team. That's just my opinion, and I'd love to know your thoughts. And I'll show you how Blair is an example of this happening. And to show you her being an example of this, I want to bring up a longtime friend and creator, Savannah Marie. That's right, you know what's up, you read the title. Guys, another one bites the dust. That's right, we are celebrating the loss of another MLM from the MLM sphere today. Savannah Marie is an anti-MLM content creator. And if you're interested in the topic of anti-MLM, I highly, highly recommend her channel. She was the first friend I ever made on YouTube. And you can see that in a lot of instances, when Savannah would upload an anti-MLM YouTube video on a specific company, Blair would upload a video about that company after the fact that would have a lot of similar information. One of the most egregious situations of what I would say blatant stealing of information was the Black Oxygen Organics video. How did you stumble upon the topic of Black Oxygen Organics? So this was a few years ago, so my timeline might be a little goofy, but from what I remember, first I'm hearing that there's an MLM that's selling dirt for, it was like $100 a bag. Actually, you're gonna laugh at me. I have some. No, I haven't opened it, but this was literally it. That's Black Oxygen Organics. <laughs> And people are consuming this. Putting this powder in baths, in water. Savannah Marie made a video on the MLM company Black Oxygen Organics with the title Black Oxygen Organics, the MLM that sells dirt. Then, 
Eight months ago, aka four months after Savannah made her video, Illuminati makes a video on Black Oxygen Organics. So much of this video has such identical information to Savannah's video. I was working on putting together the entire deep dive, like all of the information that we had gathered for that six yeah. to eight weeks into one cohesive video that was easy to consume. And that's what I did. Um, and then lo and behold, like two, three weeks later, here comes Blair. Do, 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 do. Hey guys, I got a video. Um, yeah. And it seemed, it seemed very obvious Similar. where she got a lot of her information from. And what's that? Practically catty corner to the bog? Yeah, that would be a landfill. These products are made from a soil that is right next to a landfill. As a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not a scientist or a biologist. And full disclosure, I'm not a scientist or a biologist or a chemist or any of that. A fulvic acid is apparently a humic substance, which means it's a naturally occurring compound found in soils, compost, marine sediments, and even sewage. Fulvic acid, which is a naturally occurring substance found in soils, compost, marine sediments, and sewage. First off, Savannah's video on Black Oxygen Organics is a great video, and I highly recommend you check it out after this video if you're interested in the topic. But on top of that, Savannah is involved in the anti-MLM community. And when there's a big topic within the anti-MLM community, they'll do a lot of collaborative research together. So they had a Facebook group in order to help each other out in preparing each other for videos on Black Oxygen Organics. People started really digging into it, pardon the pun, but it was literally dirt, they were... <laughs> doing deep dive, deep, digging deep into the dirt MLM. <laughs> a lot of research went into this. We had multiple group chats full of other creators. We had a lot of people behind the scenes digging up a bunch of stuff for lack of a better term. One of the group chats I was in had like all the mods to a Facebook group that we had called Boo is Woo. In anti-MLM group chats, which Savannah Marie was involved in, Illuminati's writers were pretty much secretly trying to join these black oxygen organic group chats to try and get more information on what they were talking about for Illuminati's video. We had a join request from one of Blair slash Illuminati's writers stating they were one of her writers. We are not going to add them as I feel they will just be joining so she can get content for a video and I have some issues with that. They one day sent a message to the group chat and was like, by the way, just so you guys know, Blair slash Illuminati's writer just requested to join the group. I denied them. Just knowing that she probably was not going to credit you guys like properly. But that's exactly like. what it was. It was just like, well, she clearly has no respect for like the work that other people are doing. So just right away, the mod was just like, yeah, no, I, I denied them. Blair has claimed she doesn't know that there was an anti MLM community. Something I recently learned apparently is there is this whole, uh, anti-MLM community, mm. right? I kind of thought I was on my own little island. But the second she wants to do a video that they're all doing a video on, she has her writer go into their group chats to steal information basically, so she can get more information for her Black Oxygen video. That's why Blair's information in her video was so similar to Savannah's information, because one of her writers infiltrated their group chat. And while of course it's, it's difficult to know exactly what files were pulled, what pictures were saved, what screenshots were taken. We don't know for sure, but I mean, come on. <sighs> There's no denying that stuff that was taken from that Facebook group was used in the video, like period. And obviously I don't have like like solid proof of what it was exactly she got, what information she used. But all I know is that I was never credited personally. What they did do, was put the Facebook link in like because she has like a document of um, sources that she does for her videos. So she put the link to the Facebook group as a source, but it's a private Facebook group and you have to like request to join it. It's archived now, so I don't think anyone can join it. So instead of crediting the people who were actually doing the mm. work, she just put a link to a Facebook group. If you're a larger content creator and you know that you received a large amount of research off of a group or a community mm -hmm. that was doing research for a collective of weeks. In that video, you don't credit any of those creators. You only link to that Facebook group. Mm -hmm. You don't say in that video, thank you to this community. Thank you to these people who have been doing research, which is already 
disappointing and you have a larger platform, you have more power. So not only do you do nothing to help them, but you're actively doing things to harm them and to step over them to try and remain on top on YouTube, utilizing mm -hmm. their research to try and gain a foothold on the YouTube platform. And I just think that's a really harmful way of being a creator on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And even though Blair has claimed in the past that she doesn't know about the anti-MLM community, she's clipped Savannah Marie in one of her videos about Young Living. Something I recently learned apparently is there is this whole uh, anti-MLM community. Basically the article tells about a baby who died on September 4th, 1982 in the healthcare facility in which Gary Young owned. Blair included that clip in her video about Young Living, but didn't credit Savannah as like an anti-MLM content creator because Blair cannot possibly give anyone credit besides herself on the YouTube platform. So to me, there's no excuse for any creator to not give credit where credit's due. Of course, one or two mistakes can happen, but when you see a sort of long-term pattern of that, it sort of creates this culture of a larger creator wanting to step on a smaller creator and sort of utilize their work as a stepping stone. You know what that sounds like? Sounds oh. like a pyramid scheme when you talk about it that way. One person stepping on little people to get to the top? Please. Please, Blair, we know what you're doing. Like, Yeah, that it does sound like a pyramid scheme. Of course, not every content creator is going to remember or be able to credit every other video that's been done before them on a certain topic. But it is certain ethics of remembering to just shout out certain content creators. If you're a larger content creator with a bigger platform, being able to utilize your platform and understand the power that it holds and not use it to stomp on people and try and like be the only person at the top, like a pyramid scheme, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, that's what I'm saying. So that just goes to show how, I don't know, allegedly, there could have been some heavy inspiration going on with at least one or two of Savannah Marie's videos. But a shout out to my girl Savannah. She deserved way more credit from Blair for giving her so many ideas over the years. <laughs> Blair was a member of Sad Milk, which was a collaboration YouTube channel focused on reaction content. Hi everyone, welcome to Sad Milk. We are a train wreck. Hello. We're Hello. composed of eight Hello. YouTubers. The members of Sad Milk were Blair, Oz Media, Wonderstruck Guy, and Damien Lee, who were collectively referred to as the Milkmen. Former members also include One Topic at a Time, The Click, Flinders, and Salty. Sad Milk seemed to be fairly liked as a channel by fans, but according to those within the group, though they were making profit, they were struggling to make a good amount of profit, especially for the amount of members they had. A side project like Sad Milk was affordable and even profitable in the latter months. In order to do this long term, we needed to ensure we were bringing in more income in addition to having fun with the community. Then eventually the group was disbanded, and Sad Milk has since been discontinued, allegedly because of a series of bad things that happened with Illuminati and the group of friends. Most of the information as to what went on between Sad Milk was kept vague and unknown until the Legal Eagle copying scandal came to light. Click, a former member of Sad Milk, was being asked by fans to speak about Illuminati, so Click made a tweet saying he wasn't going to be associating with Illuminati, that she was getting into trouble both publicly and privately and that he didn't want to be associated with it anymore. And this tweet caused other people who were formerly associated with Sad Milk to come forward about their experiences with Blair, which blew up and caused drama and a lot more attention than Click was initially intending. This blew up way more than what I intended and also made some other people come forward with their own stories, both in private and in public. But maybe the unwanted attention that Illuminati needed and deserved. So, what was Illuminati accused of by former Sad Milk members? Well, mostly, former Sad 
Milk members accused Illuminati of being mean and abusive, and claimed the reason the group split up and the channel dissipated was all due to Blair's bad behavior. So here are some of the former group's tweet threads. The Click tweeted, Heya peeps, I've seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati and would like to clarify I'm not affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. I left her and her collaboration group Sad Milk due to similar behavior as seen in recent events. Lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor anger management, to name a few. Eventually, I believe pretty much the whole group left her. The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour, I think hard to know, screaming at me for an array of random things, calling me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations. When people started questioning that maybe she was the reason everyone left, there was a very convenient updigging of 11 to 14 year old videos of me, stuff I made when I started my channel in 2009 when I was a teenager. As you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time aged like milk. I publicly owned up to my past mistakes and apologized. Wonder, a former member, also posted in response to Click's tweets, a sad milk thread. Forgive me for being this scattered, emotions and all. Gotta love them. After being threatened with a breach for speaking out, I can confirm that the behavior Blair exhibits is entirely accurate here. The amount of hours I would spend online making drafts, editor tutorials for new hires, staying up trying to get some editing in if editors were shorthanded. I missed Christmas with my brother and father fixing the mistake of the editor she hired, and I didn't even get a thank you. It took more than half a month to even get paid. Meanwhile, she delayed payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes, visit BMW dealerships, and spend hundreds on food in a day. To say Sad Milk split on creative differences is a joke. It's a flat out lie. Again, I'm aware of the bridges burned, but I can confirm that call took place where she screamed, cursed, and had a meltdown towards not the click and one topic at a time. It was a train wreck. She lives like an actual monster. Her home is a mess, like hoarders bad. Constant subtweets about me on Twitter and ignoring me. And if I dare say anything back, her Discord manager would happily remind me of my contract. This is disgusting. I have spent the last two years of my life rebuilding from the ground up due to this woman. The only difference is I get to come back stronger as a person. She doesn't. She can't take that away from everyone she screwed over. And then the person who was supposedly her best friend through all of this, Oz Media, also responded to all the allegations, saying, I think it's time that I actually speak out on the current Twitter threads regarding Sad Milk in 2020 to 2021. I cannot express how scared I am to do this. The fear I have in my gut to even speak out. However, I do feel it's important to say my piece on this subject matter. It's actually bizarre to read these Twitter threads because to know that other people were afraid of Blair, I don't know why she has this power over people to make them so afraid of her, but she attacks people and makes them feel like she will never stop attacking you unless you stay silent. And I just want to commend everyone who has spoken out about their experiences with Blair. Blair, I'm sorry, but you have hurt me. I need to speak out without being told by you, oh, I'm just the villain, I'm always in the wrong, or something along those lines. Words I've heard from you consistently, I want to be heard for once. Blair was indeed the aggressor. She always has been. As as an example of this behavior, look at the legal eagle situation. Blair has the habit of starting fights, but will almost never publicly apologize if proven wrong. What is missing from both Click and Wonder's threads is the fact that I acted as Blair's front runner. Anything Blair needed to say went through me first, essentially act as a spokesman. This was actually a common factor in our relationship. I would always act as a filter to keep her out of drama or from saying things which would be seen as offensive or kindle for a larger fire. I stopped doing this in January. This does not excuse me from protecting her for this long, but it is the truth. I've lost so many friends, isolated myself, been at her side despite feeling like my connections to the world were being severed. Blair, I need you to know that you hurt me more than you realize. I know you're scanning this and having your team read it over, maybe even looking at sending me a legal threat as you parade around to do so, but I want you to apologize for once in your life and take 
take accountability. Please, Blair, you would rather paint the world red than admit you have fault. And these Twitter threads blew the F up because people were not expecting such disturbing accusations to come to light. And they were floored that so many people, former employees, colleagues, roommates, and friends were all saying the same thing, that Blair treated them terribly and was basically a shit person behind the scenes. The drama basically went from this person claimed someone copied them when they didn't to, oh, this person's a monster. So what does Blair do? Now that these Twitter threads went viral alongside the legal eagle copying allegations and everyone could see how her past colleagues and friends felt about her alleged horrible treatment of them, well, Blair made a response video that was terrible with a title that said Illuminati Exposed. Hey everyone, well, there's no really fun or interesting way to start this conversation. So um, you guys know what you're here for and I'm just gonna jump into it the way I know how to. She exposed not herself, but instead attempted to expose all of her supposed ex-friends. Due to the clicks in action, our shared moderators had brought a situation in his server to my attention. Instead of addressing everyone's accusations, she did the tried and true YouTuber thing that never actually works, but YouTubers continue to keep doing it, where they deflect blame and make accusations of everyone else who is accusing them of things, which again never works and makes them look even more guilty. In this video, she accused Click, the person who made the initial tweets of not wanting to associate with Blair of using slurs consistently for many years, mainly the R word. That being said, at the time in 2020, Click was still using horrifying language and slurs that have long been deemed unacceptable. As well as being pedophile affiliated because P content was posted on his Discord and he did not remove the content fast enough. In Click's Discord, there was a 19-year-old bragging about a 12-year-old that he was claiming to be involved with. Then Blair accused Wonderstruck of, she accused Wonderstruck of living in her house for free after she allowed him to live in her house for free. I'd like to reiterate that unless Oz was charging rent without my knowledge, Wonder was living rent-free while earning $1,923.08 every other week. How dare he? She also accused him of driving a BMW that she leased to him after she allowed him to drive that BMW. After many in-depth discussions with Wonder, I made the decision to purchase a vehicle that he had already agreed to enter into a rent-to-own contract with said vehicle. How dare he? And then she basically exposed how she herself abused him, it seems, by practically owning his life, owning where he lived, owning his car, owning his job, controlling every aspect of his life. Aside from him accepting my job offer, this was the only legal documentation between the two of us. Which at the very least is not a healthy environment for an employee to exist under, to have literally zero freedom from your employer. Then when he wanted to move away, she stole back the car from him and literally admitted this in her own video. There were two outstanding instances that voided our agreement and constituted the repossession of my vehicle. Due to multiple defaults by Wonder in our contract, I felt that I had no choice but to repossess the vehicle, which was my property because I am the one who owned it. And then Blair did the most out of pocket thing you could do in what is supposed to be your own apology slash expose video. And she went on to expose very private information about Wonder's mental health, his depression, and his unaliving note. He expressed that he wanted to seek therapy, and I think that's a fantastic decision. Why? What makes you think 
what what was your intention of this video? Wonder literally made a tweet thread saying Blair treated him horribly. And then she makes a video saying, yeah, and you were depressed during this time. As if that makes it better? As if you exposing that information makes you look better? What? I don't know if she thought if I'm going down, I'm going to take everyone down with me. I don't know if she just wanted to embarrass Wonder or I don't know if she literally was trying to gaslight the internet. Like, don't listen to anything he's saying. His mental health isn't good, which goes to show how manipulative of a person she is and how bad her intentions are. That is someone at their most vulnerable moment. And like I've said with my own experiences with Blair, she exploited people and takes advantage of them at their most vulnerable moments and then throws it back in their face. Then at the end of her response video, she addresses Oz Media and kind of cries. I've like watched her build those tears up on multiple occasions, whether it's she forgot she had a prior engagement. So she built up tears and said, I have to take Casper to the vet and I'm very scared. So I won't be able to make it or for talking to other um, like content creators that she's had issues with of welling up those tears for like apologies for talking with employees, for talking with uh, me or her roommates. It's something that I have watched her do on numerous occasions. If they were genuine, I mean, there's that, but I have a really hard time believing it with how many times I've actually seen her build those tears up. And considering when I did post my thread on Twitter and I did make the comments that I made, the tone that she had like in, in messages was night and day. And talks about her own personal issues that she's dealt with. You've been with me through a lot of really intense and personal situations in my life. You were there throughout the entire process of my mom's cancer diagnosis, her various treatments and hospitalizations. The truth is, like we've privately discussed before, I always hoped that we'd be able to reconnect again in the future and mend our friendship. I meant that when I said it to you and I believed you when you said it back. I'm not sure if this is in an attempt to get Oz to defend her or at least get him to remember the friendship they once had so he continues to stay silent on the matter because I'm sure he's the one person who knows where most of her skeletons are buried. After Blair's response video, Click especially was distressed because the allegations Blair made against him were extremely serious. So Click made a response video addressing these allegations allegations. Click claims that after people left Sad Milk, Blair created slanderous rumors about them and would not leave him and others alone. Spreading misinformation and trying to enhance her own image was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat, you name it, you name it. This was Blair all along. Blair's main claim against Click is that in Click's Discord server, where thousands of people are chatting, there was an instance where someone posted P content at 2 a.m. Click's time when he was sleeping. And because he didn't remove it fast enough, he was at fault, even though one of his mods removed it before Click had even woken up and realized what had happened, and the user was banned from the server. The situation brought up mentions a video joining my discord. It is said that neither I nor my team took action against this predatory person and actively chose to do nothing to resolve the situation, basically just letting them run amok. Click did not address it or wasn't fast enough, etc. Now the first detail that was conveniently left out of the accusations is that I was asleep. In my time zone, this occurred around 2 a.m. and within the span of me sleeping, this random creep in question had already gotten banned. In One Topic's video, One Topic backs up Click's claims about how the P content situation was handled quickly and in a timely manner. The retelling of how our group conversation went and using it as a way to frame the situation as click not actioning soon enough or responding timely is simply a lie. 
By the time we got into our one-on-one -on -one call, and even the group call, it had already been taken care of. The person who had been inappropriate was banned from his Discord. But nevertheless, Illuminati used that entire situation as leverage and blackmail to sort of go against Click. Here's a screenshot where she's sharing that same group call and saying, this is that call where I rail Click for not doing anything for months. Then I think I've shown it off in this video to clear my name and show that she has consistently presented half-truths and twisting events to the worst possible interpretation. Someone also pointed out the irony in this whole situation is because Illuminati posted the screenshots from this whole situation in her Illuminati exposed video, that means she held on to these screenshots for over two years, which is sort of a weird thing to do, holding on to pee content just in the off chance you can use it as an opportunity to expose click your former colleague. Just weird behavior. So that incident happened and there was the phone call in which Illuminati screams at the Sad Milk members and click in one topic at a time decide to leave Sad Milk. So the Sad Milk channel announced the departures of click in one topic at a time and immediately after announcing their departures, Illuminati tweeted in a sort of shady subtweet that Pedophilia is wrong and had the Sad Milk channel retweet that subtweet immediately after announcing click and one topic at a time's departures, leading a ton of people obviously to speculate that one of those people were participating in you can't say timing wise you weren't trying to make it look like you were trying to deliberately say that so much of clicks video is him also providing screenshots of blair practically obsessively stalking him creep show art 2.0 style trying to dig up everything he's done on the internet since high school my only personal wish is that she just stops stop obsessing turning his staff against him so they leave his discord finding old minecraft videos he made in high school where he said offensive things so based on what i have seen she along with some staff and others would sit in this chat and just hype up each other's hatred for for us, grasping at straws. And apparently, Illuminati even paid staff members to dig up dirt on Click, paying Sad Milk staff members to find audio clips of Click saying the R word at one point. If this wasn't enough, here's a former staff member of hers getting paid to sift through raw audio recordings of me looking for dirt, more specifically the R word. I needed to work with this person to help me find Click saying the R word in Sad Milk's raw audio. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video but can't remember which one and she's over her head i'll pay you 200 dollars to find it and here's the payment which is vindictive she actually paid people to dig up dirt and run smear campaigns on ex-colleagues specifically snooping through my oldest content years of decade old content and compiling it i was like in high school and still learning English. Click also found messages that confirmed that Blair would post under alt accounts on Reddit to spread rumors and hate. She says 16 seconds, the alt account is gonna love this. In the next screenshot, you can see her writing out a draft. This draft matches with one of the posts made by an alt account called Doobie Schmertz. Under the account Doobie Schmertz, here are some archived posts from the alt account trying to drum up hate against Click and awareness of his past. This is the truth about Sad Milk. I was a big fan of Click and I thought his streams were a great way to interact with people. I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream where he watched some of his old videos and there's a video he watches where he said the R as an autist, I was mad that he would call a Minecraft zombie that word. Blair is a big supporter of the community. I love her videos about exposing autism speaks. I think Blair found out about this and fought with him about it. Imagine someone that you thought was your closest colleague and someone who you thought was a friend at the time was actually your biggest enemy the entire time. An important context to Click's story that's often not talked about, left out, or forgotten about 
about, even initially by me, is that at the time of all of these offensive Minecraft clips that Blair had dug up from Click's past, Click was a miner, not only in Minecraft, but in real life, and was living in Sweden and still learning English. According to Click, he was unaware and had not learned the offensive context behind the R word because it was at the time a completely foreign language to him. While on my channel, I am always fully behind people taking accountability for their actions, I am also always behind protecting minors, having empathy for people, and trying to be respectful of a cultural perspective. I realized that I want to take the time here in this video to inform people, if you didn't know already, on the reasoning as to why the R can be insulting to the autistic community because that itself is an important aspect to this whole story. And so I want to bring up an important paragraph from autisticadvocacy.org. When we call people the R slur as an insult, so that's directly referring to someone as the R word when they're autistic or have a disability, we are reinforcing the concept that people who have developmental disabilities are inherently less, that being compared to them is insulting, that they deserve to be treated with this sort of ridicule we are attempting to treat our insulty with. None of these concepts are okay, and that's why calling someone an R word isn't okay. People with developmental disabilities are more likely to be a more likely to be denied organ transplants and more likely to be denied other life-saving care and more likely to be victims of hate crimes. Now these statistics that link the R word and its harm all come from the United States. Blair had no real positive intentions with her smear campaign against Click or helping her friend who may have been misinformed while learning English as a second language. One Topic at a Time also recently posted a video about Illuminati where he talked about how hurt he was when he found out what Blair had posted in the alt account. Blair's alleged alt account slash troll account tried to use one topic support of mental health and openness of mental health against him as a way to drive a wedge between him and Click, who were really close at the time. It became clear the harassment was not intended to stop. There were specific portions of the posts on Reddit from the troll account that stood out to me, an intentional phrasing to drive a wedge between Click and I. In this alt account Blair was allegedly using, she specifically points out that one topic has an inclusive server that was supportive of the autistic community, but now she thinks he was pandering to the autistic community, unless he breaks his friend with Click, essentially trying to, as one topic said, drive a wedge between one topic and Click. Now, I know he apologized for his words that he said when he was 15 and Swedish and learning English as a second language. But something that's interesting is Blair specifically uses the words has been pandering to our community and using us for money. Hmm. Is this projection? Something about the word pandering sounds familiar. Because I remember a creator who made a lot of activism videos directed at the autistic community, who turned around and made alt accounts pretending to be autistic, all to launch smear campaigns of fellow creators, as if they actually didn't care about the autistic community at all. Am I remembering that right? That sounds so familiar. And it also sounds a whole lot like pandering to me. And you know, it also sounds a lot like using a community for money. But hey, what do I know? I think it's really sad to try and use someone's care for mental health against them, to try and discredit their empathy and drive to help others and offer care and support in mental health. I've had a few conversations with one topic and from them, OT seems like a very empathetic person who has a huge passion for mental health, which you can see through his fundraising for the Trevor Project, which is a charity that I've heard nothing but good things about. The Trevor Project 
Project, which, as one topic notes, is the leading national organization providing crisis intervention services to the LGBTQ youth community. And I thought as a great symbol of unity and creators coming together in this video, in my video, I'd link one topic's fundraiser that he's been doing with the Trevor Project to hopefully spread some positivity from this negative situation. If you have an issue, at me, bro. Just say it to their faces. Post about them publicly. Take the heat <laughs> or get out of the kitchen. Who has to post on all accounts and subtweet constantly about people to spread hate just to make yourself look good, to try and fuel your own ego constantly? Also, you, Blair, can try and feel better about yourself and your reputation. For what? So you can crash and burn even harder? After Click's video, Wonder released his own response video to Illuminati's horrific video against him. Hello, my name is Wonder, as I'm sure many of you know by now. This type of stuff makes me highly uncomfortable, but it is something that needs to be said. Even though when he was employed with Illuminati, he signed an NDA. I had kept quiet for two years out of fear and NDA threats. Blair has said that all of Wonder's claims are anecdotal. I'm going to address his concerns, though a lot of it is fairly tricky since he hinges his accusations on anecdotal commentary. Yet all of Wonder's claims have been backed up either by Blair literally admitting to them in her video or by Wonder showing photo proof in his video. So in his video, Wonder talks about how he started working for Sad Milk when he was 19 years old and would do edits for really small payments and sometimes even just food. I was then offered, hey, if you want to edit a video, we'd be happy to pay you. I was such a new creator and I was so new to contract work itself that I personally thought $20 was fair pay for my work after my initial payment that I asked for was Burger King because I just wanted dinner. Obviously, I was compensated more than that for that video. If there were unfinished videos or deadlines, he would end up working overtime that was unpaid, staying up late working until 5 a.m. on a project to get the video up in time. I was up roughly until 5 a.m. working on that video and I waited to make sure it was good to upload and that we we had the okay. At the time that he started working with Blair, Wonder was living in Austin, Texas, but Blair was encouraging him to move out to Colorado. He was open to the idea so that he could be closer to all his colleagues and create more content with them. And during this time, I was really wanting to move forward with content and really get into creating full time, which I was already doing, but I wanted to take it a step further. I wanted this to be my life. Blair also had a big interest in real estate and wanted to build houses for everyone on the team. Her goal was to build houses for everyone on the team, have them all live in houses on the same cul-de-sac, and basically all live near each other and produce content within the same vicinity. Not once does she mention throughout this video that when I first had the discussion of moving to Colorado, it was because Blair wanted to get her hands into the real estate market and wanted to build a home, something she had discussed with other former Sad Milk members. It wasn't just me. Which sounds like a toxic situation. It's a compound content mill. What, is she going to lock them in the houses until they finish editing content for the day? Is she gonna install cameras in the walls to make sure they're working 24 seven? No, thank you. This is also very similar to a company town, which Blair has done an expose video on and is kinda a bad thing and exploitative in nature because it just ends up forcing people to constantly work for their company who owns not only their job now, but also their home, their food, their life practically, which you can see Blair tried to do with her employees. She tried to own everything about them. And Blair made a video on this. So she knows this bad, yet she tried to do this. So again, this woman does not give a sh about the content she's been making for years and years. That's cool. Instead, she's just been using her content as like lessons for how to exploit people in her daily life. Cool.
So Wonder moved into a home with Blair and Oz and initially was only supposed to live there temporarily for free. I will also leave out that I was originally only supposed to stay until August and that I only stayed 30 days in Colorado feels like a contorted attack on who I am as a person. But everyone's living situations continually got delayed so he continually ended up staying there which made him uncomfortable so he kept trying to help out around the house as much as he could. While I was in their home, if I didn't know how to help, I would oftentimes clean their home. I wanted to help Blair with her recording space as she felt stressed in her little office. I wanted to buy us plants to liven the place up. I tried at every possible turn to earn my keep. But Blair, of course, turned it around and used that against him and painted him out to be some sort of freeloader. I kept him on payroll. I continued his pay even though no work had ever been completed. While Wonder was living in the home with Blair and Oz, Blair also hires Wonder as an editor for 50k a year, which Wonder claims was a life-changing number for him. In regards to my pay on the surface, 50k a year sounds beyond generous for editing a channel. I'd agree. I was personally astounded. I moved my entire life to another state because of this number. And Blair hired him as an editor for her Illuminati channel. Channel, where she would Twitch stream and then edit those Twitch streams down into YouTube videos on her Illuminati YouTube channel. And it sounds like she hired Wonder to go through her hours and hours long Twitch streams and edit those down into digestible YouTube videos, which she now claims he never met deadlines for. So she fired him within his first few weeks. Wonder did not meet the deadlines for either stream. My deadline was extended to August 2nd. I was fired within my deadline. But Wonder said that Blair had a hand in every aspect of his life. His home, his job, his car, so much which was really scary to him at the time. I felt defeated. I had literally left my apartment for this. I lost my independence for this. And at any moment, she could take it all away from him. And eventually, she did. So while Blair gave him a job, Blair purchased a BMW for Wonder, who she paints as a freeloader, but she also gives him a job and buys him a BMW. So none of this is making sense. As a person who does not like when people buy me things, I was extremely uncomfortable with someone making such a large payment towards a vehicle on my behalf. But in Blair's words, she had the money and insisted that I get the car. At this time, Wonder claims he's struggling with his mental health and dealing with dissociative episodes. I told my therapist at this point that I hadn't felt real in a while, which anyone who has suffered with dissociation and dissociative episodes can all but relate to. And when Wonder told Blair about this, Blair even gave Wonder his therapist. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have recommended a therapist who was so life-changing for me to somebody else. Which was also Blair's therapist at the time, which again, it's just this aspect of control. I give you your therapist. I give you a car and that person's also your only connection to this new state you just moved to. I mean, I feel like that would lead a lot of people to feel very depressed and isolated and scared because you have no support system besides this one person who you feel like has so much control over your life and that's a very destabilizing feeling. So when Wonder went to Blair and told her about his mental health and what he was feeling, Instead of being supportive and helpful, she told him he needed to leave immediately. After hearing this, she made it urgently clear that I needed to leave the, the house immediately. So Wonder leaves to see his dad on the 4th of July. My only options were being in a home with someone who won't even speak to me, as I believe Oz had gone to visit his father at the time, or I could go visit my father and just spend some time with him. So I chose option two. But before leaving, Blair had Wonder sign her BMW rent to own agreement, which from what it sounds like means she's having him go through her to rent out the BMW, which feels a little bit sketchy. I made the decision to purchase a vehicle that he had already agreed to enter into a rent to own contract with said vehicle. Because he was 21 at the time and claims he didn't even want a BMW in the first place. I'd like to clarify, I did not ask Blair to do this. In fact, I insisted on our first call the exact opposite. 
opposite. I am not a luxurious person. And didn't really have much credit history. Why did she insist on him owning a BMW? Why did she buy the BMW for him and then have him sign this contract where he's renting out a BMW through her? That seems very shady to me. Of course, I don't know the inner details of what took place. At least from Wonder's account, it wasn't like Blair was a co-signer on the car. She was the individual owner and having him rent to own through her. Extremely uncomfortable with someone making such a large payment towards a vehicle on my behalf. But in Blair's words, she had the money and insisted that I get the car. And then according to Wonder, when he asked to see any legal writing showing he owned the car in any way, they wouldn't show him any legal writing besides that one weird rent to own piece of paper. I never saw the paperwork on the car. And a rent to own policy from what I could find is usually through a dealership and payments are made through a billing service. So this entire setup makes no sense and is very shady. And allegedly, according to Wonder, he had his father who's an ex-cop and a family friend who's a lawyer look over this rent-to-own agreement that Blair had him sign and both have said it's not a legally binding contract. I had my father, who is an ex-police officer and the former contractor, as well as a lawyer friend of the family, look over and review this legally binding contract. They both agreed that this was in fact not a legally binding contract. And then, according to Wonder, when he decided that he didn't want to go back to Colorado after staying with his father for some time, realizing that maybe staying with family was the best thing for him and for his mental health, Blair decided that either Wonder was going to pay what the depreciation value was on the car. Upon hearing this, Blair informed Oz that she wanted me to pay something that is known as a depreciation value. So that basically means that Wonder was to pay her what the car dropped in value since they bought the car? That feels like a scam to me. I don't know much about cars, but is that not a scam? Or she was going to have the car repossessed, not by a car company or a dealership, mind you, but she was going to personally come down to Texas and take repossession of the car. So I'm confused. Is Blair, she herself a dealership? Why does she have have the right to ask Wonder to pay her a depreciation value on a car and then come and steal a car from him and take advantage of this guy by giving him a bogus contract so he doesn't have any legal writing or legal ownership of this car so she can steal this car whenever she wants to from him. I mean, did she not literally scam this guy? Did she not literally take advantage of this guy? At the very least, she manipulated his ignorance about cars at the time and did some really shady things with him. So Wonder even said he would return the car to them and pay the depreciation value of the car as long as he could see in writing that his name was legally tied to the car. When I asked to see everything my name was tied to legally with the car, which any person would do, I was met with a copy of the car contract. Because yeah, I'm not gonna pay you an amount that the car has depreciated in value if my name has never been tied to the car and I've never even owned the car and no one gave him any legal paperwork that showed that he ever owned the car in the first place. So I asked again to see the paperwork of the car. It is the only right thing to do to make sure you legally know what you're paying. Yet he'd been making payments to the car the entire time, which is really sad because that did nothing for his credit history. He was basically making payments to Blair, it seemed like, for no reason. Reason. Again, this woman runs a YouTube channel about scammers, and yet she's been doing shady, scammy stuff with this guy, it sounds like. Blair flew down to Texas with a last minute text early in the morning telling Wonder he's made numerous contract breaches and she's now going to repossess the vehicle. Later in the early hours of July 29th, 2021, Blair flew down to obtain the BMW. The audacity. And so so Blair ended up stealing the car back with all of Wonder's possessions in it because for a period of time he was living out of that car. In the car he had cameras and his YouTube play button which allegedly all got 
got thrown in the trash. However, Blair stated she would make arrangements for me to obtain my items. This never took place, which I found out recently from Oz. These items were subsequently thrown in the trash after some time. And Wonder felt completely helpless. There was literally nothing he could do about it. If I had to explain the feeling, I felt helpless. Again, I just wanted to do the right thing and do it the way I was asked. The fact that Blair felt so dignified that she had the right to do that. And then get on a YouTube channel and talk about this MLM company that took advantage of someone. And this MLM company that took advantage of someone. The fact that she pretended and masqueraded as if she stood up for people who were being taken taken advantage of. All the while, she took advantage of employees like Wonder. I mean, what the heck was this whole thing? And then she practically, allegedly stole all of his possessions. I mean, this is the hypocrite of all hypocrites. In Wonder's video, he also addresses the constant messes in the homes they were living in, which also puts Blair in such a negative light. These are the living conditions of Oz Media's home after Blair moved back in. Conditions he was embarrassed by. Boxes, trash, cups of mold. According to both Oz and Wonder, they were always living in a mess. Uh, this this is tricky to talk about just because like that was like the condition of living with Blair like that that's always how it has been no matter how many times cleaning was attempted it always ended up becoming that level of mess according to Oz he was constantly breaking down Blair's Amazon boxes and he seems to imply that Blair was the one who lived very messily it just always like like remessified there there was no cleaning in Blair's response video she claimed that the mess that wonder showed in his original tweets was just one room used solely to unbox parcels. The photo he shows is a photo of a room that wasn't lived in by anyone in the house and it was being used as a temporary storage and unpacking site while everyone was moving in. But more pictures have come out to prove this just not to be the case. And Oz has claimed that there was one instance where he begged Blair for the house to be cleaned as his birthday present. I, I I even remember on my 22nd birthday, I had asked like, hey, can we please get like the kitchen and living room cleaned up so we actually have like a space to exist. And that was like my birthday present for that year was cleaning the kitchen and the living room. Oz also claimed Blair never helped in cleaning and maintaining the house, but would mess it up again within a few days. It just felt useless and she would never help with cleaning. It, it was always me. I was always the one breaking down all 800 of her Amazon boxes. I was always the one doing anything cleaning wise. It just felt like I was there to clean up her mess. Wonder in his video also spoke about his severe childhood trauma and it seems like Blair would exploit this fact as a way to discredit him because she knew he had trauma and was in therapy but then also used all of his mental health issues as a fact to blast him publicly as anything that she could use against him. It is a lot of stress to come forward with your story especially with dealing with someone like Blair, who's not only done a lot of harm to you and has a lot of power on social media, but also attacks anyone who speaks against them. To do that on top of being so open and vulnerable with your mental health is an admirable and courageous thing, and Wonder deserves a lot of credit for that, because he is not alone in the abuse he's had to endure. And unfortunately, Blair has harmed many others. And the more who are able to speak out, the more Blair can be stopped. After all of these people came forward, Illuminati made some posts on Twitter saying, Hey everyone, I'm fully aware of the recent false allegations that have surfaced. I want to take a moment to publicly state that I am taking these allegations seriously and am committed to rectifying this situation promptly and appropriately. I understand the concerns and potential impact these false allegations have caused. My team and I are actively working behind the scenes to gather all relevant facts. I am 
am committed to transparency and accountability throughout this process. Rest assured, I am taking decisive action to address this situation. I will provide updates and communicate any necessary actions as soon as possible. And after that, the cease and desists came. Oz Media tweeted, So Illuminati has officially sent me a cease and desist. Best part is, she cites parts of videos which I had no part in and demands I make a public apology. Wonder tweets, Blair, aka Illuminati, just sent me a cease and desist for speaking out against her abuse. I will not be silenced. Illuminati has lost over 180,000 subscribers at this point. Blair lost 180,000 subs at the height of the controversy, though suspiciously her sub loss tapered off and currently Blair's sitting at a loss of 300,000 subs. And not only is Illuminati losing subscribers, but she is losing sponsorships. It seems that no one will tolerate hypocrisy and poor treatment of coworkers and colleagues. HelloFresh dropped Blair as a sponsor. On May 23rd, 2023, a Twitter user called Hot Stuff Henley contacted HelloFresh. At HelloFresh, we asked nicely that you stop doing ads with this evil person. They Thank you for bringing this to our attention. We stopped working with this creator and will not be working with them in the future. On June 8th of 2023, meal kit company Factor also dropped their sponsorship with Blair. Even Patreon launched an investigation on Blair after a customer sent an email to them about Blair's the Patreon trust and safety team sent an email saying, We're making a thorough assessment of the matter. Thanks to the artifacts you provided. If you could send some more specific evidence pertaining to the instances of abuse, please do not hesitate to respond to this ticket as it would help us determine the most appropriate action forward. We will reach out if we need anything else. And Patreon has an abusive conduct that says you don't do anything illegal or abusive towards others. If you're a creator earning money on Patreon, we may be exposed to risk based on what you do with those funds. As a result, we may look at what you do outside of Patreon. Basically, Blair's Patreon could be canceled if the team does not like what she's been exposed for. And allegedly, according to this Twitter user, Mint Mobile hasn't canceled their contract with Illuminati, but told a Twitter user that they're currently looking into the allegations. On June 12th of 2023, Stitch Fix dropped their sponsorship of Illuminati. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. The actions of this creator did not align with Stitch Fix values. We have stopped all advertising on their platforms. Thank you again for flagging. ExpressVPN followed the next day. We briefly worked with this influencer earlier in the year. We are no longer working with them. We appreciate you taking the time to write about this. Knox Investa, a candle company that Blair created, told a customer that Blair is no longer associated with the company. Hmm, let's, I wonder what's going to happen here. I asked if this is a real person and they said, yes, hi there, how can I help? And I say, is this the shop run by YouTuber Illuminati? And they respond, hi there, Blair is no longer associated with this company. I hope this helps. Bro, she got kicked out of her own company. She, she built this. And, or at least that's how she promoted it. CB2 is a YouTuber that has been doing great research into Illuminati, particularly into Illuminati's Patreon and Discord server since her controversy, and found a response that Illuminati made on Patreon that hasn't been reported yet that I'll let him talk about in his own words from one of his videos, where she allegedly says there will be real world consequences for those who are speaking out. It's clear my public voice holds no weight, so I will take my voice to a level playing field with real-world consequences for actions people have taken against me. This is the problem with Blair. She never wants to admit that she is the problem. And this is why I'm always afraid to speak out, because she will attack and attack as much as possible, and it will never stop, especially if she thinks she can take you down. CB2 also went into Illuminati's Discord and found creepy and comments in Illuminati's Discord when she tried to expose Click for having creepy content in his Discord. Meanwhile, this individual is asking Charlie, the 15-year-old, to call him daddy and asking, how far will you go? Charlie refuses and the individual blocks him in an effort to force him to call So CB2 messages Blair to try and make her aware of this. I was just banned from your server. I was asking a mod to report behavior for one of your Patreon members in the Discord server. And whoever it was decided to ban me. I have evidence and I would like to share if 
if at all possible. This isn't drama, this isn't for attention, I'm just trying to report this behavior, which I get no response. And instead, the mods in the server make a public announcement saying, basically, anyone trying to create drama or gather evidence against Blair will be perma-banned. And justified the creepy comments as an age gap relationship. I apologize for the double ping, but I strongly suspect that drama trolls have entered the server and asked questions related to age gap relationships to try to expose the Patreon server as condoning. When the child was 15 years old, the individual now acknowledges that he is 15. He says, Pothole, since when does a 15 year old have bills? Again, the hypocrisy. Now CB2 has been sent screenshots that not only will Blair try to pursue legal action against him, but she's also sending a personal investigator after him. So again, she will attack anyone who she thinks she can destroy, especially since CB2 is a smaller creator. She has no problem going after him. On Illuminati's Patreon, and Discord server, those who are kept closest to her, even her remaining employees, are being kept in the dark about this controversy and are not allowed to comment on it. And on this Discord, they call her Pyramid Mom, which feels a little weird. And not being able to talk about the controversy feels like a lack of accountability. Also, Illuminati's subreddit, r slash Illuminati, was made private in May to prevent any discussions surrounding her controversy. Controversy. Again, these YouTubers keep using the word accountability, yet seemingly cannot understand what the word means. Accountability isn't deflecting and silencing all criticism. It's allowing dialogue and open conversation so you can receive criticism when it's necessary and fair. But Blair has historically not liked criticism of herself and not allowed for it. Which brings me to my own personal story of my experience with Blair. Here we go. So as I mentioned earlier, when I started on YouTube, I was in the anti-MLM community, which was a small and niche community on YouTube that I loved and cared for deeply. And if you've been here on this channel since my start on YouTube, wow, I love you so much. And I really appreciate that you've stuck with me since then. And when I was making videos on anti-MLM content, I posted two videos in a series on Tyra Banks, which had to do with her treatment of models on her reality show, America's Next Top Model, as well as the fact that she had an MLM company. She would have created that financial freedom and achieved those goals sooner. So scammy. Any sort of scam ad always has the word financial freedom in it. And at that time, I was not the only YouTuber to do a video on Tyra Banks, and I in no way thought I claimed ownership on the topic of Tyra Banks in any Anyway. In fact, I think at the time, Sloan had actually already done a video on Tyra Banks. Uh, shout out Sloan, you're amazing. So I also want to clarify that I in no way have this attitude on YouTube where if I do a video on a topic, no one else is allowed to do a video on that topic. I don't think that at all. I was only a few months into starting my YouTube channel and a fairly small YouTuber at the time with 20,000 subscribers. One day, a Illuminati had posted a video on Tyra Banks and I didn't even initially know about her posting that video except for I had received a few comments and messages that she had posted a similar video to mine. And me at the time, I don't even think I had 20,000 subscribers. So getting messages like that freaked me out because this creator had 600,000 subscribers and I had less than 20. And to hear so many people say the same thing about a situation and message me the same thing scared me. For example, like this comment, which I was again, a very small YouTuber. So I already didn't get a lot of messages to begin with. So to be getting that many messages was 
overwhelming for me. I knew they wouldn't stir up drama for nothing and had messaged me out of genuine concern. For example, this comment, which again, this is literally a screenshot from two years ago that I grabbed from my old video that was reposted by Tipster. And by the way, this old video, I blurred out Illuminati's name because I didn't want to have a direct call out. But um, they said, notice that Illuminati question mark because they weren't sure if they spelled her name right. Up uploaded a similar video today or a couple days ago and I haven't watched it but glanced over their sources and it's oddly similar to your content. And Tyra Banks and the MLM she was involved in. At the time that people were messaging me this, there were no sources on this person's video. The only thing it had in the description was in parentheses, sources coming soon. Not sure if it's just a coincidence, but don't want your hard work to be copied and exposed to a wider audience to get more views and revenue. Sorry if this comes across as abrasive or not well researched on my part, just something I noticed. I was like, Tyra Beauty, Goop, etc. Sounds familiar and similar order of content too. The fact that multiple people were kind of like, hey, we're noticing this thing. I hadn't even been the one to initially notice it since I was getting messages to the point where other people were noticing this. I thought it would be the right thing to do to privately message this creator. I send this larger creator a message. At the time of sending that message, since I was like just a really small creator, I was like, I don't know how to handle this. I felt super awkward. So I was just like, hey, um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of messages about this, but like, let's talk. I sent Blair a message saying, hey, hun, sorry I had to. It's an inside joke for anti-MLMers. So I thought that would be like a funny opener. I don't know if you know of my channel. I'm a really small YouTuber who has been inspired by the content you make. I got a few messages about the video you posted about Tyra's MLM because I've done a video on that topic. I'm really happy you're spreading more awareness on this topic, but it did low key feel like a lot of what was said in the beginning of the video was really similar to the things I discussed regarding Tyra's MLM and her controversies, the rabies bit, etc. Coincidences happen and I'm sure as a larger YouTuber, you're accused of stealing content from people you've never even heard of or seen before. So I get it if this message comes across that way. With the intention of just being open and honest, I was really hurt by the video though because you're someone who has really inspired me and the content I make. So I wanted to reach out and hopefully have an honest but positive positive discussion on it all. Either way, I still appreciate the work you do. And you know, to be fully fair to Blair, looking back, she has an entire team. So I also do think looking back, it could have been that someone on her team saw my video or she was receiving just a lot of comments asking to do a video on that topic and they just happened to stumble across similar research. To be fair to Blair, I will never definitively say she or her researcher copied me, as there are tons and tons of possibilities as to why another creator can go over a lot of similar information in a video, which I mean is why I wanted to talk to Blair about this information in the first place. As a smaller creator, I was getting a lot of comments of people telling me Blair copied me. I didn't know what to do about it. You feel scared because this other creator has so much power and influence, they can literally squash you and your your entire existence. Um, but she wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> so I sent that message, but I never get a response. So I just assume, okay, well, she never responded. She probably is just really busy and never saw the message. And so I honestly moved on and forgot about it. So then a few months go by and I end up getting pregnant. Now, if you don't know about pregnancy, there's a few different versions. There's some people who get pregnant and they have great pregnancies where they are not sick and they are very healthy and they're doing great. For me, I was in the sickest state I have ever been in in my entire life, um, especially early in my pregnancy. I had to go to the ER because I was losing fluids. I had to stay on bed rest because I was extremely sick. In the first few weeks of January, being so sick that I can't even get up out of bed, that I can barely even move. And I was so scared during early pregnancy 
which is called the first trimester. It's a really fragile state of pregnancy. You want to limit stress as much as possible and you want to rest as much as possible. So I was terrified of losing my baby at that point. And so I was trying so hard to limit my stress and stay as healthy as possible because I was already really, really sick. And so the doctors were just urging me to stay healthy and limit my stress. Um, and then all of a sudden, I end up in one of the most stressful dramas I have ever experienced where someone is trying to ruin my career and attack me online. And it feels like they have so much more power than I have that there is nothing I can do about it. And I'm also completely debilitated and terrified that any more stress than usual will completely send me over the edge. It was one of the most terrifying and stressful times in my life. And I think it really traumatized me at that time more than I realized because I really shifted into this point of just pure survival where I was just trying to survive past that point and make it through the drama and make it through that point in my pregnancy and just get through it all and just make it stop. Blair put me through all of this. You knew I was pregnant and you still attacked me online. You said mean and hurtful things about me. You did not care if your followers attacked me, what stress that would cause me. Never really apologized to me publicly. Just said we were both stupid. You didn't really care about my health at all. The entire time you only cared about protecting yourself. Yet I was so stupid and believed you could grow as a person. Like we were going to have this awesome woman growth moment that wasn't about drama and clicks and views and was just about two people moving on from it all and growing and caring about a broader message of exposing scams and MLMs and harmful people and practices. But you don't even care about that. You didn't care about hurting me. You don't care about any broader message. You just care about you. So anyways, I was pregnant and it hit the fan when I started noticing Blair making sub tweets that I was pretty sure were about me. But I was like, no, that can't be about me. I'm literally a nobody. I have 20,000 subscribers. I think a little more at this point, but still, pretty much a no one in the YouTube community. But hearing from other people that she was constantly doing this to them now, I am now 100% certain that yes, she was subtweeting me. She also made an Instagram story post referencing me in a subtweety way that was so bold that people absolutely knew it was about me. She urged her followers not to follow me and claimed I was subbotting. People knew she was talking about me and there was no hiding the passive aggressiveness. At that point, I was like, literally what's this person's problem with me? So some of the people who had watched my channel also messaged me saying, hey, I think you should also check out this podcast with the Welsh twins. Cause she also went on this podcast and said some pretty nasty things about you on there too. And then my stomach sinks. <laughs> Cause first off I'm like, okay, she's subtweeting me, making Instagram story posts about me. Now this podcast, how many things am I gonna have to track of what Blair's saying about me? And then also, oh my gosh, what the heck did she say about me now? What did I do that was supposedly so bad? So I tune into this podcast, my heart is like pounding. Also, I loved the Welsh twins. I loved their videos, so it's so embarrassing for me. I loved Illuminati, respected her, loved these guys, and now she's telling these guys how awful of a person I am. It's humiliating and demoralizing, so my heart heart's pounding, my stomach's sinking. I'm just feeling like the worst feelings. I still feel the horrible, awful feelings I felt that day. So I listened to this podcast. On this podcast, she's claiming that I was like angrily claiming that she copied me and my content and I asked her for credit. Um, so she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit. 
which if you remember from my original DM, in that DM, I never once asked for credit. I never said, I want credit, give me credit. Never in that tone did I ever say that. So she literally spread a blatant lie about me on this podcast for no reason. She said I was a really small YouTuber, very much talking down to me in a demeaning way. I'm gonna try and keep it vague so I don't mention this person's channel, but uh, it's, a, it's a very very small YouTuber. Which just goes to show how she views small YouTubers in general. She claimed that I wanted to follow and mimic her content style, which was not true at all. I had no intentions of becoming a corporate content mill. She even admitted, well, kind of, that she was restructuring her channel to kind of mock my own channel. I'm good on that one. And so I'm listening to this and freaking out because now all of a sudden, I was wondering if she was going within the YouTube community telling people who I was to all of these larger YouTubers. So there were all these rumors about me and no one would ever want to associate with me, making me out to be this honestly terrible sounding person, which was just so humiliating. She then talked down about my research, saying my research is just TMZ and Wikipedia. But she had like five sources, you know, one was Wikipedia, one was Buzzfeed, one was like TMZ, or something. In certain instances, I will source TMZ and Wikipedia. Absolute most offensive thing that was said on this podcast was that the research that I do for my videos is just Wikipedia, BuzzFeed, and TMZ. After hearing this, I was so confused that I looked through every single video that I've done to be like, okay, did I, first off, have I ever used TMZ as a source? Also, Blair uses Wikipedia constantly. You see how she takes an insecurity of hers and throws it back in someone's face. Blair also said that I just drink my coffee and talk about my opinion in my videos. And then she sits down for a video, drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time, and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things. So yeah, that was a little hurtful to hear, but I think at the time she was just trying to get people to not follow my channel by basically trashing me and my research, which of course wasn't perfect, but I was literally just starting out and it was just incredibly vindictive for no reason. And so after hearing that podcast, I just felt completely alone. She did this so publicly on a podcast without even having the decency to reply to me about it. Like I was nothing and deserved no response from her like she was the victim in all of this. Me making that message to her gave Blair an opportunity to crush another anti malem creator, and that's really all she wanted to do. She wanted to be the only anti MLM creator, the only commentary channel, and was competitive and mean and cruel with every YouTuber because of that. So at this point, after hearing that podcast, I had no idea what to do because she had been attacking me really relentlessly publicly to the point where I felt like I needed to defend myself publicly. I felt like I needed to post a video about Illuminati and show what I messaged her privately and make some sort of video statement. I felt like I needed to at least try to defend myself because she was attacking me constantly to the point where I felt like she was trying to completely ruin me and it felt like she was not going to stop. It was pretty much at this point tormenting me to know that both public and behind the scenes, she was trying to tarnish my name. So this person in a podcast takes an opportunity to go on there and talk crap about me. But the thing is, what this person says on the podcast is just blatantly not true and so easily disproven. But before I made that video, I even sent her multiple follow-up DMs because after that podcast, it was clear that she could see my DMs. And I was honestly terrified of Illuminati's reputation and her following. I didn't want to have to make a video to defend myself. I respected Illuminati still at this point. And I thought that maybe if I could send her a DM, that maybe there 
there was some sort of misunderstanding and I could clear it all up with her and it would all be over. Again, I was so pregnant and I was so sick and I delusionally thought that maybe messaging with her still via DMs, we could just resolve this and it would all be over. Because I'm, again, so small compared to her and her platform. I just don't want to have to keep fighting with her. So I send her another message saying, last time reaching out to you, sorry if my DMs have been annoying. I just feel like there's been a misunderstanding and didn't realize how offended you were by my message until someone sent me the podcast where you mentioned me. I understand how you'd be frustrated by my DM, but I didn't intend for it to come across in a harsh way. Why was I being nice and understanding to someone who never treated me nice at all? I don't understand. I think I just wanted this to end. So I just said, there's never been any beef on my end. I don't want beef or anyone thinking I hate them. This is so cringy. Blair was so clearly not in any way hurt by what I said. She didn't think I hated her. She just saw it as an opportunity to like squash an ant in her eyes. And here I was like thinking I had hurt her feelings genuinely and like wanting to work things out with her when she had done nothing but be so rude and disrespectful to me. I mean, to be fair to myself, this was the first controversy I had ever gone through with any YouTuber, and it was a YouTuber I greatly respected at the time. But looking back, after she's literally not replying at all, it's just so embarrassing. Like, why did I go above and beyond for a crummy person who treated me terribly publicly again and again? who went out of their way to bash me and try and get as many people as possible to think the absolute worst of me. If someone's treating you terribly, don't just make yourself smaller to make them more comfortable. And that's what I did with Blair again and again and again. I think I was so desperate at the time, literally so desperate to not have any drama, but she really did not care at all and kept going. So eventually it gave me no choice choice but to defend myself publicly and I did. I never accused straight up accused this creator, this larger creator of copying me. What this person says on the podcast is just blatantly not true. All because I sent her one DM months and months ago. At this point, it's clear to me that they do not care about hearing my side or giving me the benefit of the doubt in any way whatsoever. And to be honest, I feel at this point that I was intentionally misunderstood. For me to try this many times to extend the olive branch for the message that I sent originally to be taken in such a harsh way and to be justified as a reason to say that many things about me, I feel like it was a very intentional misunderstanding. And I hate that I had to talk about that. Now, at the time, I was so, so afraid of her influence and her fans since I knew that she was so much larger than me that I literally didn't mention her name. Instead, I wanted to post what she had said about me on the podcast and just show the evidence of why it was a lie. The most most, absolute most offensive thing that was said on this podcast was that the research that I do for my videos is just Wikipedia, BuzzFeed, and TMZ. I could not find anywhere where I use TMZ as a resource. And as far as using Wikipedia, honestly, Wikipedia is a boring resource. If I use Wikipedia, it's because I use that source to define what a company is and then went into my research on that company. And just pray that people would believe me enough and that she wouldn't use her followers against me to try and destroy me. I don't want random people that I've never even had a conversation with thinking some way about me or hating me or thinking I dissed another creator or accused them of copying me and demanded credit, all of that. It just sucks. I don't want people thinking that about me because it's just not true. And luckily, once the video was posted, I received mostly positive feedback, but on Twitter the next day, she literally lost 
her ever living mind. She was tweeting about doing a live stream on Twitch, debunking some claims made against her. And a lot of people knew exactly what this was. Blair was livid. There's a tweet thread of our kind of back and forth on Twitter that's since been deleted. So the only one that can be seen is from Tipster's video where she says, I love doing debunking streams. Basically saying she's gonna do an entire live stream where her 700,000 subscribers at the time would see her basically try to take me down. Which, I mean, there wasn't anything to debunk. I was definitely at the time scared of what kind of further stress she would try and bring my way. Because again, at this time, I just couldn't afford any more stress. The other Twitter threads that have now been deleted was another Twitter exchange between us, which I can't really recall the specifics of, but I also remember people in that Twitter thread basically replying being like, this is making you look really bad. You were exposed for lying and now you're saying you're gonna go on a live stream and attack relentlessly this pregnant woman. That's a bad look. And remember, at this time, I never wanted to go public in the first place. I tried to keep this private as much as possible because I really couldn't afford this amount of stress and it's just snowballing and getting worse and worse. More and more people are getting involved. The comments are snowballing. By the time I had posted my video, I had already publicly posted that I was pregnant. And I want to say at this time, I was just past my first trimester. So it was already common knowledge that I was pregnant. Blair knew that I was pregnant and in the early stages of pregnancy, and it's just kind of a bad look wanting to do a live stream takedown of a pregnant person <laughs> because at that point, I couldn't handle the stress that I was literally like this close to just logging off altogether. The health comes first and it was just so much. Also, this is so stressful for me. I don't want to be dealing with drama. Physically, I can't. My doctors are recommending me to limit stress as much as possible to the point where I'm this close to getting offline altogether. I literally cannot handle this because if I lose my pregnancy over this stress, I would lose it. Like mentally, I would lose it, you know? So then I receive a message from Blair that makes it sound like not only was Blair going to do a live stream, she was going to post a video about me on her channel to her 700,000 subscribers. She sends me a message saying, so I'm going to be defending my statements against your claims publicly. There were no identifying characteristics that it was you. You are the one who decided to say that was me when nothing said it was about you. Is there any statement you would like to provide to me before I proceed. I'm not 100% what to even talk out with you. So now, since she said this via DMs, I'm now 100% sure I'm the one that said through Twitter, can we please talk via DMs? I'm not 100% what to even talk out with you since you've decided to make this a public issue. Is there some common ground we can even find in this? Oh my God. You're going to make a public video. So of course I'm newly pregnant, which she never mentions, never has any concern about. And she's saying she's going to be doing all of this, putting all of that on me. And she's saying, is there some common ground we can find in all of this? Basically alluding to the fact that if you do something, then I'm not gonna make these videos. As all of you guys have guessed, of course, her holding that over my head that she's gonna come out with a live stream unless I delete my video. I look through all of this and I can see how she played me like a fiddle and I fell like right into it. So then I reply, I would love to understand from your perspective why this all went down the way it did. If we can work things out privately, I'll delete that entire section of the video. I offered to delete that section of the video. So then I said, but I don't understand why you acted the way you did. Attacked me publicly. A lot of people knew it was me you were talking about in the podcast and DM me. So you didn't hide my identity very well. I don't know. I only showed what you said and my intention was only to include what was mentioning me in the podcast. I didn't go out of my way to try and find dirt on you or dig up more things I have a problem with. I just want to understand from your perspective why you did that. It did genuinely 
genuinely hurt me. I tried to reach out before in a kind way and you never responded. I don't get it. I want to understand what the f happened and she liked that message which again looking back she hearted it because literally she's like i like that that's what i wanted i wanted her to offer up to delete the section of the video now we're getting somewhere she responds okay and i would definitely like some answers too and i have many questions as you do if we can work things out privately i will not go forward with my stream and subsequent videos subsequent videos so she was planning to not only make a stream but make multiple videos about me if you have discord i'm more than willing to talk things out with you i just hate typing everything in my opinion and i feel like this will be a bit of a time consuming process for us to go back and forth in dms if not i understand that as well and we can continue here i said i feel that and thanks for responding in a respectful way i get that you felt attacked i think we both felt attacked and responded in defense but i would like to hear your side because that's the respectful thing to do but that's also what i wanted to do from the beginning and had been trying to do this entire time and it's so obvious now at this point the only reason she is open to talking with me now at this point is because she's experiencing backlash she was more than comfortable never hearing my side and squashing me like a bug when she felt like she could do that and wasn't experiencing any backlash would you be open to chatting on the facetime feature on insta or we can facetime call each other obviously we don't have to show your face i'm pregnant and would look like a wreck right now anyways or we can zoom or anything else if you have a preferred method of communicating she said, yeah, I'm okay with that. I didn't know IG had a call feature. I'm terrible with IG. I don't answer messages anymore. Okay, sure, because I've noticed off. I'm good with cams off because I'm a mess today. Let me figure out how to do Zoom stuff. I didn't ask, but like, is now a good time? I said, that's okay. I'll call you on the little FaceTime looking icon. She said, yeah, let's go for it. Let me keep my phone on my desk because I'm like Danny DeVito right now. I'm the trash man. I said, I feel that. That's what I look like most days. Video call, 12. Video ended 314. So around a three hour call, it looks like. After our call, she sends me the supposed subbotting website that made an article on me and told me that I should get a lawyer to take down this article so it doesn't look like I'm buying subbots. There was an article on a site that does subbotting, I guess. Literally, I have no idea still to this day, like what the f this site is. The funny mm -hmm. thing is the logo is a purple triangle for this site, so. I don't know. <laughs> Projecting! Whoa! <laughs> so this site apparently wrote an article about this one singular video that I did. This one singular video. Mm -hmm. This site writes an article about that. This site has written multiple articles about multiple different YouTubers. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they do sub botting on that site like this is called seo people right like, sites do this so that they can rank up when people search different youtubers and yeah. buy their product you know it has nothing to yep. do with anyone sub botting you know right it's ridiculous like, that is and like so, what, that's that's such a reach is she a yoga teacher because she's reaching that's the stretchiest yeah. reach I ever saw. And there's like this Twitter post where, you know how she's rapidly losing subscribers? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a spike of a thousand subscriber gains in a minute. Deflecting. <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're gonna accuse someone of subbotting, like maybe like check your analytics first before you go off and accuse other people of doing it. Like, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. I thought the phone call was two hours. It looks like with the timestamps of the FaceTime call that it was three hours. And to be fair, the phone call was mostly positive. That's why I wanted to do a phone call or a meeting in the first place. I've heard stories of Blair being hateful and mean on the phone, but it wasn't like that. I feel like usually when I'm on the phone with people, I'm not a mean or hateful person. So I was friendly and I complimented her work and we talked about our opinions on content creation and our differences in our content and i wanted so badly to believe that if we could clear things up we could just move on maturely and focus on creating important content again i respected blair at this time as a content creator i genuinely didn't want people to start bashing blair's content because i thought she was doing important work and i thought that we were two individuals who wanted to take down bad mlm companies so 
I thought it would just look bad for us to be fighting with each other. It just felt like in the grand scheme of things, it was more important to focus on the scammers and the bad companies. And Blair on the phone call made it seem like she was on the same page and even talked about how she wanted to be my friend, which I should have seen as a red flag because it was a completely 180 different personality to how she was posting online about me. But I didn't. I wanted so badly to believe that she was the person she was pretending to be on the phone call. I thought it was great symbolism of two women content creators coming together for the greater good. But really, I think all it was was her trying to further her agenda of me deleting that section of my video. That's all she wanted. She didn't care about the greater good. She didn't care about being friends with me, definitely. She didn't care about the message behind our content or our values or any of that. That three hour conversation was complete bullshit. She was selling me a lie just to get me to do what she wanted me to do. And I was an absolute dumb who bought into it way too easily. Again, she had done nothing but treat me like absolute crap online at the most vulnerable time in my life. And I forgave her in an instant and I don't fully know why. I think I genuinely wanted her to become a leader of people in the creator space. And I did want this situation to be a good example for other creators that there doesn't need to be nastiness and infighting and drama between creators. There doesn't need to be people stepping on other people to get ahead in the creator space. I think I wanted so desperately to believe that someone I respect and looked up to wasn't a complete piece of shit. So I ignored all red flags and only paid attention to the good information that Blair was feeding me. But when I look back on the phone call, there were a lot of subtle threatening undertones. Again, there was the website with the article about me, which how did you come across this website with this article about me? That's, That's suspicious. suspicious. How did you find this? Either you're doing way too much research on me, which is creepy, or you have something to do with this article of me existing on this website. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, Blair told me about Tommy C and Tipster and how they treated her terribly. They were out to get her. And I think she told me this information so that when they made content about our situation, I wouldn't side with them. She also said that they made fun of her appearance constantly and that their fans would attack her appearance. She also said that from my Instagram, she could tell exactly where I lived. And she told me what specific Instagram posts of mine I should take down if I don't want people to find out where I lived. Which she tried to make seem helpful, but had a threatening, scary undertone to it. Again, I don't have this phone call recorded, but a lot of the statements that Blair made after the fact about our phone call can kind of back up what I'm saying here. It's common knowledge that Blair, at least at this time, lived in Colorado. Now, I don't talk a ton about the fact that I live in Colorado and I don't publicly share my location that often. I've shared a few times that I live in Colorado. I haven't shared like the specific city, but Blair and I happened to live in the same city at this time. So after our phone call, Blair literally tweets about us both living in Colorado and living near each other and how after this phone call, we're besties and we're gonna meet up for coffee and goes on a live stream and talks about the fact that I live in Colorado. One thing that happened in addition to this was she did a Twitch stream. We both found out we both live in Colorado and we live like an hour away from each other. I'm hoping maybe once like the COVID stuff chills out or whatever, um, that we can actually go get a tea or a coffee. So yeah. She's blasting my location and the fact that I live near her publicly online in multiple different places. So A, not only do I live very near to this person that actively tried to destroy me, but she now knows this information and is blasting it online, telling all of her followers that 
I live very close to her. So she told me privately, hey, these posts on Instagram show exactly where you live. You better delete them soon. And then goes online right after our phone call and tells all of her followers, hey, Madison lives right near me. So all of her followers could basically go onto my Instagram and find all those posts and figure out exactly where I lived very easily. There's so much weirdness about that. I don't want to say she was deliberately trying to dox me and get people who avidly followed her and possibly hated me to dox me and figure out where I lived, but it kind of felt that way. If someone told me privately where they lived, I would never all of a sudden go on a bunch of public tweets and live streams and blast where they lived publicly and that they lived within the vicinity of where I lived to all of my followers. Another important context to this is at the time I did not live in the safest house and when I was eight months pregnant actually my house ended up getting broken into, my car getting stolen while I was home actually. <laughs> which was a very traumatizing event. I'm laughing about it now because it was actually just wild. So I just, I have a thing about that. I have a thing about my location being known and just like the safety of where I'm living. Why was she advertising where I lived to her audience like that. And it was never for genuine reasons. It was never because she actually wanted to grab coffee with me and be besties with me. Because a few days after she sent out those tweets about how we're grabbing coffee, she completely stopped messaging me. <laughs> so you just pretended to be nice to me on a phone call, like we were going to be mature adults and figure this out for the greater good of content everywhere. We both admitted wrong. We both made mistakes is what it was. We just kind of moved on because like that's what adults do. No mention of the fact that she literally lied about this woman. Then you went and blasted my location publicly. Thank you. We DM'd for like two days about how tough your life is, being a content creator, and the drama, which I cannot believe I participated in this conversation so casually, literally believing all of a sudden that Blair was the victim, like she literally did a number on me. In the DMs, I'm ultra friendly with her. It's yeah. It's so embarrassing. No, no but like, as so long as I've known you though, Madison, like you've always given people the benefit of the doubt and just been like genuinely like kind to people. And people like Blair will take that and use it to their advantage. And I think Blair at that point knew that if she didn't get a handle on that whole situation, then she, this would have blown up the way it's kind of blowing up on her now. Like it would have looked really bad for her. So she's like, oh, well, she's a nice person. She'll, she'll be easy to manipulate. Also, I have way more subscribers than her. So she'll, you know, but it's not, you can't, you can't be embarrassed for that though. Like that's it's not so your fault. Bad. Saying in these DMs after our phone call, like you do incredible research. And we're talking about neighborhoods in the city that we live in. We're talking about like, you know, how we're gonna be, you know, friends and besties. Yeah, like I'm, I'm sorry that, you know, now you're getting hate comments about this controversy. I'm sorry that happened. I was like trying to empathize with her and be like, I, I'm sorry, because I really did feel bad that like, because of this, she was now getting videos made about her. I think any decent human being would feel the same way though. I think she yeah. absolutely manipulated you and it's really sad, but I also don't want you to like feel bad about that because like it could happen to anybody. It's almost like you'd be feeling bad for just being a genuinely good person. It's like, don't feel bad for that. And then a few days later, she stopped messaging me. So in the phone call, we came to an agreement. We were both going to make public statements. She wasn't going to make her live stream and multiple public videos, multiple public videos on her channel. And that was that, drama over. But I think looking back, I apologized too much. I literally deleted my video, made a public statement apologizing to Blair. And she was basically just like, yep, kind of sorry. We both made mistakes. I just wanted everything to end. I wanted to believe that there was going to be this happy ending where Blair would grow and she would be a great example. And I wanted the torment and stress to end so I could have a healthy pregnancy, which of course 
I had a healthy baby and there was a happy ending there, which I'm so grateful for. But I regret bending over backwards to make myself so little. Why did I just let her continue on? Give her exactly everything she wanted? What if I stood up more, held her accountable more for how she had hurt me? And what if that prevented her from hurting more people? I'd hoped that maybe she would have learned and grown from all of this and moved on and been a better person, not as vindictive. At the end of all of this mess, that was really all I could have hoped for, but that was really a lie I had told myself at the time, because she continued to be horrible and do horrible things, and all that stress and chaos was for nothing. The cover-ups I did for her were for nothing. She made a public statement and a live stream saying basically we're now besties. And after the phone call, I thought we were on fairly good terms. I would message her for two days after our phone call and the messages I still have after all this, they're still up, even right before making this video. We talked about the anti-MLM community, about predatory practices MLM companies do with mom groups. She acted like she could be a mentor to me as a YouTuber. There was a YouTuber that was sort of tweeting about this drama, asking why she couldn't forgive him in the manner she forgave me, and I sent her a screenshot about that. I even sent her a screenshot of Tommy C's video but I asked her if she wanted me to make a comment on that video. Again, she had convinced me that Tommy C was attacking her appearance and that thumbnail on that particular video did kind of make it look like he was making fun of her appearance. Recently, I went through and watched that video. In that particular video, there was nothing bad that Tommy C said about Blair. So again, I think Blair fed me a complete lie in that circumstance and I empathized with her, felt bad for her because I thought she was being attacked for her appearance by this group of people when it was a complete lie. I wanna apologize for Tommy C for thinking that you were going after someone for her appearance for years when that was just a complete lie I was being fed. But I think her trying to be my friend, saying she realized the errors of her ways and messaging me in a friendly way was 100% an act. Because a few days after it worked and I had deleted everything, she stopped messaging me completely and went on acting like I never existed. And I think the reason why is she never anticipated that Tipster and other people were going to screen record my video. So thank you. I think she thought she was going to get away with it all and that the entire controversy was going to be deleted forever. And when Tipster and other people reposted it, she realized that she wasn't just going to get away with it. And being pissed off, she just cut contact with me. And I realized I was completely used. She gave zero shits about me. It wasn't a women supporting women. We're being so mature about this and moving on for the greater good. It was just a larger creator taking advantage of a smaller creator using her power to threaten me by making not only a live stream, but multiple videos about me for me just trying to defend myself online. Then to get me to do what she wanted, she pretended to be my friend. And the second it all didn't work out for her, she cut me off and just threw me to the side, literally in the trash. All that bullshit oh, we had a great chat. We're gonna grab coffee one day. Yeah, it's been two years, Blair. I'm still waiting on my coffee. I don't know. Maybe you just think I drink too much of it in my videos. So I probably don't need any. And then she sits down for a video, uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes long, drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time, and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things. In her mind, she just saw me as a fool and just like she got away with it all. And she did for the time being. And I was a fool. I was. And after all of that, it just caused me to distance myself from a lot of people in the YouTube community. I just did not trust anyone because she was one of my first, if not the first, 
experiences I had with any creator in the larger YouTube community. So it really made me think, is every YouTube creator like this? Is every YouTube creator mean and vicious and going to take advantage of you and step all over you the second they get a chance? Though I know that there are some really great creators out there who have been incredibly nice and kind and amazing and supportive. So I want to take this opportunity in my video to shout those people out. Turkey Tom, I've recently messaged and was so, so kind to me. Sloan is always amazing and I just always smile when I think of him because never a bad thing to say about him. He is so incredibly kind. Mooncat has always been an inspiration to me. Genuinely original content, puts so much effort into her content for being original and is so inspiring. Smoky Glow, I started watching her before I ever made YouTube videos and I hope she's doing okay. Love her to death. Within the anti-MLM community, Savannah Marie and Margaret Angel are my ride or dies and my true friends love them to death, have always been there for me, and I highly recommend checking out their channels. I remember Jackie Ina commented on one of my videos once, and I was just over the moon so happy about it. Love her. She's always amazing in the YouTube community. And thank you so much to FPS Diesel for being the only creator to email me and ask me directly what happened between me and Illuminati before making a video about the Illuminati situation. I want to clarify, I decided to work on my own video to bring my experience forward in hopes that it helps validate the experience of others and maybe help foster a positive creator environment when all is said and done, as well as finally close this chapter in my life. That being said, after doing my own research on wonder struck the click one topic in Oz Media's experiences, I've further spoken with them to hear from their own perspectives and get some further clarity on their story, and even discussed their recollection of my interactions with Blair. I'm so thankful that through this, I was able to make friends with genuine, kind, and also just funny and intelligent creators, and was able to overcome trust issues that Blair instilled in me, and they've definitely helped me through that and understand what I went through. So there are some amazing creators out there. I just think I was initially heartbroken when this happened and it again just happened at such a vulnerable point in my life and that's my story with Lair or Illuminati. This has been such a long and exhausting video that at the end I don't really know what to say besides it's a cruel world out there. <laughs> Watch out and that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. Comment, cruel world. So I know that you made it to the end of this video, especially on this one. It really means a lot to have your support. I know so many of you guys wanted to hear my story, but we're patiently waiting and that really means a lot to me. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.